we just had the cancellation of iSchool Family a couple weeks ago. With a total of 122 chapters and almost 3 years of serialization, this might be one of the longest running manga in Jump to get a proper cancellation. Behind it, the manga leaves a decent amount of fans who mourn the death of a manga they loved. And right after this, we got the cancellation of PPP, PPP. With 70 chapters, this was another manga with a decent following that was sadly not big enough to keep it running for longer. The art truth is, if you are someone who wants to be part of the Shonen Jump community and read the new manga as they come out, you need to be fully prepared to find a manga that you think is going to be great and see a lot of potential just to see it being cut short right before your eyes. If you follow the magazine for long enough, you'll have been there and you know exactly how that feels. This is why some people outright refuse to read Shonen Jump manga unless they reach a certain number of chapters. And if you haven't felt it yet, do not worry because this pain will come to you eventually. So to honor the recent fallen, I decided to go through some of the manga that I loved as well as some of the manga that the community loved you know, to just get a full report on the pain that being part of this community causes to each and every one of us. And to reassure you that even when everyone hates that little axe manga that you love, that you are not alone. The oldest manga I remember reading weekly that got cancelled was actually not long after I started reading manga. 2009's Anidoki was the newest manga by Mizuki Kawashida, who had written Ichigo 100%, one of my personal favorite manga at the time. And at the time, I wasn't really that informed about Shonen Jump and its predecessors, so I just assumed that this had been cancelled for some unfortunate reasons. And I was legitimately sad about it. Not because I loved Anidoki per se, but because of the potential I knew it had by being from the mangaka that it was. My ignorance continued for a couple more years, and the one that I really remember was Metallica Metaluka in 2010. Now, this manga wasn't by any means a good manga, it's really just a generic battle shonen, heavily inspired by the ones that came before, and one that I didn't even really bother to finish so far. The reason why I remember this manga so well is more because of my unfounded optimism about it, which in retrospect is ironically hilarious. This was the first battle shonen from Shonen Jump that I saw debut. The first one I had read the very first chapter at the same time it was released. Because of that, I thought this would be my opportunity to read a manga that would explode in popularity, the next big thing in real life and that will be able to say I've read this since chapter 1. At the time, I thought that debuting manga in Shonen Jump were rare, and that they would be in the magazine until they ended. They would have anime adaptations and good exposure because it was a Jump title. In my head, regardless of quality, it was a guaranteed success. That was my sole reason to read past chapter 1, and here I am now, probably being the only person to talk about this manga in the last 10 years. Well, besides Shonen Flop, of course. I won't get my dream of being an annoying Ipsir until Nisikoi and Assassination Classroom, which I was reading both manga since chapter 1, and I am extremely cool because of that. After Metallica Metaluka, I've come across many cancelled manga, and I started to be more aware of how the magazine worked, and be a lot more pissed about it as well. One that I've talked about in the channel a couple of times and actually survived for almost two years was Magico. I think this was the blueprint for what Mission Yuzukuru would eventually be in terms of romance and the mixtures of genres. I'm not saying that Yuzukuru copied it, as they are very different when it comes to setting and plot, but both mangaka were trying to do very similar things in their exploration of the genre. Magico would be one of the very first manga to make me really annoyed that it got cancelled. After 80 chapters, I was pretty invested, and while the manga still pulled a decent ending, sometimes I still think about the world where the anime of Magical was allowed to exist. Especially because I thought it handled romance far better and different than normal battle shonen do. Yasukura really helped to deal with the pain 10 years later. Another one that I really couldn't understand how it got cancelled was Pajama no Kanojo. This was a nechi rom-com about the ghost of a girl living with the main character, and as someone who loves rom-coms, I fell in love with this one quickly. The art was great, the characters were great, and the romance was very cute. I still think the main reason for this one to flop was Nisekoi, which was quickly rising in popularity at the same time. And while if I had to choose, I'd definitely pick Nisekoi, I'd also really like to see both of them coexist, but Jump doesn't really seem to like having too many rom-coms running at the same time. But there is one final manga I want to talk about before we get into my big break with manga and jump and into the era of manga plus, and that is Angry Joker. Angry Joker is somewhat popular nowadays because it's one of the few cases of a mangaka ending up writing a massive hit later on, being Black Clover. Angry Joker was my go-to sad it got cancelled manga for a long while. I just really enjoyed the art style, the character designs of both the main characters and the main villain, 
And the entire concept of finding historical items with related superpowers was so interesting and unique that I don't get how it failed or how Black Clover was so much more popular. Because sure, Black Clover definitely has evolved into its own thing, and I really enjoyed reading it, but I do think the start was far weaker than what Hungry Joker had to offer. Hungry Joker ended in 2013, by that time I was drifting more into other demographics, you know, seinen, and not even a year later I would diminish my consumption of manga very drastically. So I didn't read any other X titles until 2019. And while I was there to watch it, that time frame was actually very important for the context of the Shonen Jump community, its growth and next manga in the West. Because in September of 2014, Viz would present to us the Jump Start Initiative. Essentially what this was, was that Viz would regularly present us with three chapters of a brand new Shonen Jump series and see if it was popular enough to continue translating. And this was big because this was one of the first time that cancelled titles were getting legal, official translations in English. And while the initiative did brought titles like Black Clover, Jujutsu Kaisen, Dr. Stone and Demon Slayer for us for the very first time, most of the titles that it held were cancelled pretty quickly. Some of the ones I think are worth mentioning are iFact Cluster, which as far as I can tell was the first title that felt was good enough to add to the actual catalog. Agri Marie, while hated by a lot of people, I went back to read it and I still think it was pretty good. U19 is mostly just mentioned for the memes, as people took its name to mean under 19 chapters and created a group of facts manga that were part of that criteria. Noah's Notes was a series that started at the same time as Jujutsu Kaisen and had people fighting about which of them would last. Int, there's a reason why Noah's Notes is in this list. And of course, what I think was the main event, the big cancel title out of all of these, Robot X Laser Beam. Now, I never read it, but even without being in the community when it came out, I remember hearing about it. After all, it was a brand new sports manga from the author of Kuroko no Basket. Plus, at this point in 2017, we were already deep into what is known as the Spockon Curse. I've done a video where I talk a little bit more about it, that will be linked in the upper corner, but the Spockon Curse refers to how there hasn't been a big successful sports manga in Weekly Shonen Jump since IQ, with the exception to the rule being Inomaru Zumo. So it's natural that people wanted this to be the one that break the curse. And while the manga did last for 67 chapters, it would eventually be cancelled, leaving a lot of people sad about it. In December of 2019, we got the last of the Jumpstart manga, as this would decided to shift into full weekly Shonen Jump simulpub format, one that will be released for free a couple months later for the entire world with Manga Plus, with Neolation being the last of the Jumpstart titles. This was when I came back into the frame. Having returned from the hobby in late 2018, I and a lot of other people saw this as the perfect opportunity to get up to date with weekly Shonen Jump, and right from the get-go got a title that I enjoyed cancelled, being Renaissance David Kuhn. David Kuhn is just the first of a couple of gag manga that I really enjoy that got the hammer. But contrary to most of the others, with this one, I really felt like there were people on my side. You see, David Kuhn was released as part of a double feature with fellow gag manga I'm from Japan. Both of these were released in the exact same issue, which is quite, quite rare, they came to fill the gag spot of the magazine. When you compare both manga, it seems like David Kuhn was overall the favorite, even in Japan. But not to jump, apparently, as they kept forcing I'm from Japan down our throats, so when David Kuhn got cancelled and I'm from Japan continued, or at least simply moved magazines, I think the community as a whole was left angry and quite confusing. Moving forward, I felt far more isolated when it came to loving gag manga that got cancelled, and even the ones that didn't. Mitomi Security was one that I did not want to read at first, but found it out to be quite enjoyable once I started. More recently, there was also Shugamaru, which I think I was one of the few people that liked it. There's also Magu-chan, which is also very good and I quite miss it. But there is one that I love above all others, one that ranks as not only my favorite gag manga, but also my favorite X title altogether, A Gravity Boys. Gravity Boy started in late 2019 and lasted all the way to the very beginning of 2021. With 2020 having been a very weird year for Jump, this manga lasted for far longer than it normally would, and it honestly kept me going through the mess that was 2020 in my life in general. After all, while the titular boys were completely isolated from outside sources, they had each other. The entire manga was based on these best friends socializing with each other, and through the manga you could find yourself connecting to these characters as if they were your friends too, laughing with them during whichever was their latest shenanigan. 
The thing that really sold me into the manga was how real the friendship between these characters felt like. To this day, I'm still sad that this manga got cancelled, but I still carry with me the moments that I got with the series and the small community that was created around it. Shout out to Mayu. If anything else, I can at least rest knowing that Gravity Boys got one of the wildest, most fun cancel send-offs the series could get with the Penis World arc. While Gravity Boys is definitely the cancelled highlight of the Manga Plus era for me, the fact that these manga are easily accessible for free pretty much worldwide means that a lot more people are getting into these series and it's becoming a lot more common for manga to be loved outside of Japan to still get cancelled and cause a lot of people to be angry about it. With that said, I think the first case of this happening would happen regardless just having in mind the name behind it, Masashi Kishimoto's Samurai 8. Cursed with a lot of hype, this one did manage to survive for almost a full year despite the horrible reviews and sales it had. While I think most of the community were in agreement about the lack of quality of the series, there is still a decent sized community that enjoyed the manga throughout its run. Which having in mind the manga and exposure this manga got, it's all but natural. I mean, this was even physically published in multiple languages like English and French. But with all of that in mind, I still find the case of Time Paradox Ghost Rider to be far more interesting to explore. This manga was released in the exact same issue that the popular Demon Slayer ended, and boy did it get eyes on it immediately. Part of it was the beautiful art, the strange plot, and how a lot of it was reminiscent of both Stain's Gate and Bakuman. I was honestly one of the many that got captivated by it from that first chapter alone, and I really could not predict the journey that this manga would embark on. The biggest problem Time Paradox faced was about the morality of the main character's actions. This manga was all about a dude that dreamt about getting a shonen jump issue from the future and ended up reading the best manga of all time, which he decided to write when he woke up, only to realize that it wasn't a dream and he had just copied someone else's story. While plagiarism and the morality of it was definitely a theme that the manga wanted to tackle, the Japanese audience didn't want to have anything to do with the grey morality of the situation. Plagiarism is bad, the main character did it, and therefore the main character is bad. The manga struggled to solve and skip through what was honestly its original core theme, but it was too late. Being cut at 14 chapters, it was one of the quickest cancellations of recent times. I would end up falling out of it as the manga would become very messy trying to control the backlash, but a lot of people still see it as one of the most unfortunate examples of the difference between the Japanese culture and the rest of the world. Battle shonens are, however, where we see the biggest cases of people falling in love with the manga just to see it cancelled. And I mean, it makes sense, most of Shonen Jump fans got into the magazine because of Battle Shonen and they're more likely to read other action manga. While I think everything from Zipman to Doron Dororon had its fair share of fans, there's three titles that stand out for me. And the first is Phantom Seer. This is one that still baffles people, because it seems like it was universally loved, it sold well enough and again it had good art. It really went hard when it came to drawing the monsters and ghosts, however after 4 volumes the manga suddenly got cancelled. Well, I say suddenly, but it was cancelled pretty much the same way as most other manga were. But this was the first time I saw such a heavy denial over cancellation. Rumors of why started floating around, the mangaka was sick, he actually wanted to end it, his mother died. Nothing that had actual sources, but that people wanted to believe anyways because this was a good manga and good manga don't get cancelled. Except that they do all the time, especially during times where the magazine is filled to the brim with battle shonens already. A lot of the blame was shifted towards me and Roboko as the manga was performing worse in sales but still remains in the magazine to this day. It got to a point where it was the fanbase of me and Roboko versus the Phantom Seer one. And you can still see this as some people actually think I don't like Phantom Seer simply because I am a me and Roboko fan, when the truth is, as an horror fan I enjoyed Phantom Seer quite a lot. The one that I didn't, and I'm just going to quickly mention, is Redwood. And the reason for it being, I'm pretty sure I've been on three different rants about this manga on this channel alone, and I cannot go through that again. I just leave it at, the pacing was horrible, the people only talked about the girl designs, it's not a surprise it got cancelled, though I am quite surprised it got a physical English release. While it's not the first X title to get it, as we previously mentioned Samurai 8, and there was also Zombie Powder, Tiri Kubo's original manga, those two titles were mostly published because of the amount of fans those two mangaka have. There's going to be an audience for them guaranteed regardless of quality. Redwood, however, is the first case of a cancelled manga in Japan by a virtually unknown mangaka to be released physically by Viz. 
And I think this is a new reality of post simul pub jump, where all of these manga are translated anyway, so the process of putting them physically while still nothing to scoff at is easier and less cost effective than it was just a couple years ago. And we can see that in the third and final manga, Ayashimo. Ayashimo was a bit of a different case, the author previously wrote Alice Paradise, which was a decent hit in Jump Plus, it has an upcoming anime adaptation, and the manga has been completely released by this anyways, so when Ayashimo started, Yuji Kako was being compared to its mentor, Tatsuki Fujimoto, and Ayashimo seemed to be on the way to become the next Chainsaw Man, but instead became another example of a manga that people can't really understand where it failed. Still, having in mind all of that, it's quite amazing that we are getting the physical editions, but it's probably something that will be more common going forward. And with that, I think we have a good recent history of Shonen Jump axed manga. But it should be noted that this isn't really a Shonen Jump exclusive thing. Banana Nonana, Criminale, and Shonen Anchi are examples of other Shonen manga that got cancelled in similar situations but from other magazines. And Akansha Overdrive being an example of a shoujo manga being cancelled in similar ways. And that's not even going into manga that get cancelled over other situations, like Act Age getting cancelled because of the crimes of the writer, or Phoenix and High School of the Dead being cancelled because of the death of their writers. Or even situations like Eminon or Stop Ibari Kung where the authors couldn't keep up with the deadlines or didn't want to continue their series. This is definitely a topic I'd like to explore even more in the future, so if you like this kind of videos, let me know in the comments below and, you know, subscribe to the channel. On your left, I'm leaving a video on a manga that I mentioned before. I'm from Japan. This was the manga that Shonen Jump outright refused to cancel, so go check it out. And if you watch also here, thank you very much, and I'll see you next video.